हाई गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरी वन वेलकम टू विजिट क्लास टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ वेक्टिकली प्रोजेक्टेड बॉडी इन मोशन अंडर ग्रेविटी इन प्रीवियस सेक्शन we completely discussed about freely falling bodies and some applications regarding to freely falling bodies right now vertically projected bodies vertically projected bodies for example a body of mass m is projected vertically upwards from the ground It is a ground point. Let the body projected vertically upwards with some initial velocity. Okay. Initial velocity projection is equal to while going up in upward direction. Gradually velocity goes on decreasing, 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 and at one point the velocity of the body becomes zero. Let the initial point at which the body projected is equal to a, and final point at which the body reaches. Is equal to b l into the where the velocity comes zero. But in between a and b, let us assume one more point c. One more point c. Here, height of the point c from the ground is equal to h l into m. Because in case of vertically projected bodies, initial velocity is given by u, and what are the acceleration? A is equal. While going in upward direction, velocity goes on decreasing. And the final velocity will be less than initial velocity. So the acceleration a is equal to negative, and which is also equal to minus. These are the conditions for a body to be projected vertically upwards. Now, the equations of motion of a body can be written as first one b equal to plus a b minus final velocity b is equal to final velocity means not at the maximum height. Suppose at the point c is now b is equal to U and A is replaced by minus G into T. This is the final velocity of the time t seconds in case of vertically projected body. Second one, from S is equal to U to the half a d square. From this, S is equal to H. H is equal to U T. It is equal to minus half a minus half g d square. This is the displacement travelled by the vertically projected body in a time of t seconds. The final velocity of the t seconds. And third one, v square minus u square is equal to u s r is implies v square minus u square is equal to minus two g h. V square minus u square is equal to minus two g h. And fourth one, distance traveled by the body in the nth second is given by s n is equal to u plus a by two into u n minus one r is implies s n is equal to u. A is replaced by minus g by two into two n minus one. This is part of our distance travel in the nth second. So these are the equations regarding the vertically projected bodies. Okay. Next one. Here some more points are there. No one. First point. Suppose a body is projected vertically upwards. Vertically upwards. It reaches the maximum height point where the velocity of the body, velocity of the body becomes zero. After reaching the maximum height, the body will once again returns, returns to the ground. Class of the and from this point, this body will be taken as a free falling body, right? Because u is equal to zero in the downward direction. Is equal to zero in downward direction. Suppose here. Find the distance traveled by a vertically projected body in the last second of its upward journey. And that, if the S N is not known, and the time taken by the body to reach the maximum height is n seconds, so the last second is n second. This should be equal to the distance traveled by a freely falling body in its first second. Come remember this point. The distance traveled by a Distance travelled by a vertically projected body vertically projected body in the last second of 
its upward motion last second of its upward motion should be equal to the distance traveled by the distance traveled by freely falling body in the first second okay na but distance traveled by the freely falling body means v is equal to 0 sn is equal to from this g by 2 into for freely falling body a to plus g g by 2 into 2 into 1 minus 1 that is equal to how much g by 2. so g is equal to 9.8 by 2 that is equal to 4.9 meters remember this point the distance traveled by a vertically projected body in the last second of its upward journey should be equal to distance traveled by a freely falling body in the first second that should be equal to g by 2 g by 2 is also equal to 4.9 meters remember this point next again what the formula for maximum height reached by the vertically projected body maximum here i think is the maximum height and from this same concept suppose a body is projected vertically upwards the total distance traveled by the body before its velocity becomes zero okay na so the total distance the total distance traveled by traveled by a vertically projected body vertically projected body before its velocity becomes zero sorry total distance in kunda the max the height yeah the height traveled by a vertically projected body before its velocity becomes zero okay na before its velocity becomes zero is called maximum see here from a to b initial velocity u is equal to u naught for vertically upward journey a is equal to minus z v is equal to zero at maximum height and maximum height we value find out okay from the formula v u a s using the formula v square minus u square is equal to 2x v square minus u square is equal to 2x therefore v zero Minus x square is equal to minus 2g into h. This is the place by h. So that's why maximum height h is equal to formula h is equal to u square by 2g. That is the formula for maximum height reached by a vertically projected body. Right? Maximum height reached by a vertically projected body h is equal to u square by 2g. Here, 2g constants. That's why maximum height is proportional to u square. Ah, h1 by h2 is equal to u1 square by u2 square. Remember one thing here, my dear friends. Maximum height is uh, height which depends on initial velocity and also gravity. It is independent of mass of the body. So therefore, the maximum height is equal to a body vertically projected body independent of mass of the body. It does not depends on the mass of the body to be projected. Depends only on initial velocity and also gravity. Say here, h is proportional to u square means at a given place. That means g remains constant. In that situation, h is proportional to u square. At different places with different velocities means u and g both are variables. In that situation, h is proportional to u square by g. Okay. This is maximum height. Next one here also. What is done by the time of Ascent. Time of ascent represented by T A. Time of ascent means the total time taken by a vertically projected body to reach the maximum height is called time of ascent. That means time taken to travel from A to B in vertically upward journey is called time of ascent. Okay. So 
the time taken by a vertically projected body time taken by a vertically projected body to reach the maximum height which the maximum height is known as time of ascent ok now again in case of upward journey initial velocity v is equal to u acceleration a equal to minus c these are the required conditions and the given conditions next at the maximum height v is equal to 0 also let us find the value t T is equal to Ta. In this time interval, the distance travelled is S is equal to capital H. Capital H is also equal to this way by this. So U the formula V is equal to U plus A directly is also unknown. I mean not necessary. From the formula V equal to U plus A, you know zero is equal to U and A is replaced by minus T and time T is equal to Ta. Time of S. Therefore, from this g into t a is equal to u or t a is equal to formula u by g. This is the formula for time of ascent in case of vertically projected point. Next again, what is the time of descent? Right? Time of descent means another thing is that here time taken by the vertically projected body to reach the maximum height is the time of descent. Now, if the return journey means the time taken by a vertically projected body to reach from maximum height to ground is called time of descent, right? Time of descent. Represented by T. It is the time taken by a vertically projected body. Maximum height to ground. Maximum height to ground. In downward journey, from maximum height to ground, it should be taken as a free formula. U0. Okay. A equal to plus Z. And, you know, S is equal to H. H is equal to U square by 2Z. H value at the other side. Cross option. H is equal to H. Also, we will find the value of t, t is equal to t, time of descent. Again, we will go for the s is equal to u divided by the s. So, here what is s? h. u0 in downward journey plus half g into t is equal to t. That's why t is equal to t. h is also equal to maximum height formula as it is derived in the previous section u square by 2g. If you have a very good name, you can take protection from the ground, not the initial velocity in case of critically downward direction. But instead of 2z is equal to half g into t d square. Okay? Here, we can cancel g and this one. t d square is equal to u square by g square or t d is equal to u by g. This is part of the time of descent. That means, remember this point here. Time of descent is also equal to time of descent. Both are same. Time of descent is equal to u by c. Time of descent is also equal to u by c. Both are same equal to the when a friction is negligible. A friction is negligible. Another one comes. Suppose the a distance is considered. A distance considered chase the time of descent. 
should be less than i of this n when eight resistance is considered when eight resistance is a and a approach is the motion cut a resistance concept chase the new ta less than tb ignore the a resistance compulsory ta is equal to tb this should be equal to pi of s is equal to pi of this n now also suppose a body projected vertically upward direction from the ground you know ground project is so it reaches the maximum height on the return to the ground after certain time the total time taken by the vertically projected body to reach the ground or to remain in a medium is called time of flight so that's why time of flight is maximum time only it is nothing but the sum of time of descent and time of descent time of descent is equal to u by z time of descent is also u, u by z now the total time or time of flight is equal time of flight represented by capital t this capital t is equal to ta plus td ta is equal to u by z plus td is also equal to u by z this is 2u by z is the formula for time of flight okay right my dear friends just if you finish the vertically projected body concept up to this okay now in the next syllabus i will explain in the next class okay bye right.